use according to your plan and your purpose, and let none of it be wasted, oh God. Um, let everything just be calculated well, and you know, just everything just thought out. Um, so God, please guide us in that. Um, also, Lord, help us to just use this money to bless others, whether that be other churches or members who might be in need, oh God, or or just anywhere that we can send this money, oh God. So please guide our leaders, guide our staff, guide our church, um, so that we can do it, whatever it is you have called us to do. God, as we continue in our service, Lord, may you just continue to open our hearts, our minds, and our ears. In your mighty name, pray. <laughs> sometimes forget the importance of prayer. For 2018, make prayer our priority in our personal life 
in our church life. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that once again you have given us. Father God, we know that through prayers we can communicate to you. We know, Father God, that this is our lifeline to you. We know and we believe in our hearts that there is power in prayer. And yet, Lord, we have not exercised this power fully. We are defeated Christians because we, we have forgotten the power of prayer. That, pro that prayer can do wonders. That prayer can transform lives. That prayer is a must if we want to survive in this constantly changing world. Father God, we thank you because we know that you are with us. We thank you for taking care of our members who have gone through emotional turmoil through the death of their loved ones. We thank you, Father God, for protecting our church members who have gone through um, witnessing some criminal acts. And yet, we know and we believe, Father God, that you have given them the uh, knowledge and the wisdom uh, to do the right thing. We thank you, Father God, for our church members who you have healed and touched this week. We have members, Lord, who have been in the hospital and have been sick. And yet, Father God, we know that all through these circumstances in our lives, Lord, you are there for each and every one of us. Father, we pray that as a church, may we focus our priorities in prayer. Because we know that if a church fails to fail, Lord, fails to pray, Father God, then we become powerless in this broken world. We pray, Father God, that you would teach us how to pray. Remind us, Father, of how important it is to come to you in prayer. Father, as we hear your word this morning, we pray for a double portion of your anointing to your servant, Pastor James, as he preached your word today. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Holy Spirit. More of you, our loving Father. And let less of us. We worship you. We adore you. We welcome you in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. John chapter 17, verses 1 through 26, and that's John chapter 17, verses 1 through 26. read a prayer from a great person of faith and history. <coughs> this is what it says. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This is the prayer of St. Francis. This morning we're going to continue our series with Go Disciple and Grow, focusing, focusing on disciple. And we have been learning um, for the last several weeks, what is a disciple? We learned that a disciple is someone who serves and worships God. He or she is changed by the Holy Spirit and obeys Jesus' command to follow Him. We also learned what discipleship is. That discipleship is leading, teaching, modeling, how to daily submit our lives to the presence of the empowering Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
We also learn about the importance of building relationship as a disciple of Jesus Christ. That building relationship involves not only sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, but also our own lives. Last week we learned about listening to the Holy Spirit. And that figuring out, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you following Him this morning? This morning we're going to talk about another important component of being a disciple. And it's also important in when you're discipling someone, this is key. This is a key practice that both your disciple and you will do, which is prayer. But as we think about prayer, what is prayer? And why did Jesus himself pray? He is God himself. Um, the main question that I want us to understand and really look to answer to this morning is, why is prayer so important to a disciple of Jesus Christ? Why is prayer so important to your life here this morning, to your family's life? If you think about prayer, without the ability to pray to God, it's difficult for a Christian or a disciple, a follower of Christ, to really to hear His voice, to, to, to ask for help, to spend time in devotion with Him. Again, if you haven't developed your prayer life as a Christian, then the truth is you're struggling here today, or you've been struggling for many years. Because without a healthy prayer life, our faith weakens. And like Elder Lester said, without prayer there's no power. I still remember my professor, Dr. Prosperly, and actually Dr. Prosperly preached here before. If you remember, her name is Lindo Prosperly. You guys remember him as an Indian um, missionary. He was my professor in seminary, and he would always share to us, well, before we talk about missions, he said, Without prayer, there's no power. Without prayer, we have no ability to see where God is moving, where He's working. And really, it's impossible for us to build our relationship in God. It's impossible for us to build a relationship with our, men, our mentee who we're discipling if we're not developing our prayer life. Now, why is it important that we develop a deep prayer life? Well, because you need it. I need it. Again, without it, we're like a ship without a rudder. We're just going towards one task, one church to another church, or, you know, go through the highs and lows of our faith. And we're drained because we're trying to rely on our own strength. We're trying to rely on our own power, our own intelligence. Or maybe you're relying on the past miracles or the past spiritual highs that you experienced, that God was present, but that's all you're relying on. And now you're just empty because you haven't developed a deeper prayer life with God. We need prayer because the truth is, if you're married here today, we're going to have marriage issues. Or maybe you have some now. If you're a young professional, you need prayer because you're going to look for direction. For your future. Is this the right woman am I going to marry? Is this the right man? Is, do I need to buy a home? Do I need to live here? There. You need prayer to seek God's will, God's direction. As a church, we're going to need prayer. Because the truth is, we're going to have some issues this year. Not that we're going to fall apart, no, but we're going to face disagreements with one another. We're going to face trials. We're going to face different storms in our leaderships, in our different community Bible study groups. Because we're not perfect, we're, we're sinners. We're selfish people. Instead of showing grace towards each other, we show judgment. And so we need prayer. We need prayer because I believe as we continue to join God's kingdom movement in our church and in your family's life, you will be persecuted for your faith. And you'd be surprised the people that will persecute you are of your own family. Because your walk with God is totally opposite to what they desire, which is the world. Because they do not know of Christ. And so when you begin to follow God, whether you're in high school or whether you're retired now, you're going to need 
prayer because you're going to need strength to continue to obey God's word. You're going to need prayer to continue to be bold about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And really, when we look at the example of Jesus, the model of what a true disciple, a disciple is who, who spent time in prayer, I believe he himself, though he was God, desired to build his relationship with the Father. Turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 17, verse 1 to 26. The book of John is written by Apostle John. John the Beloved. It's one of the four Gospels. And in John chapter 17, Jesus, this chapter is mostly called Jesus' highly priestly prayer, where he begins to pray as he prepares to be betrayed as he prepares to, to walk down his death as he prepares his crucifixion. And so here he first begins to pray for his own relationship. And so why is prayer so important to us disciples of Jesus Christ? Well, point one is because prayer helps build our relationship with God. In John chapter 17, 1 through 5, it says, Jesus spoke these things, looked up to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you gave him authority over all flesh, so that he may give eternal life to everyone you have given him. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on earth, by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before the world existed. Here, Jesus begins to pray for his relationship. He's praying to the Father. Why? Because he himself is continuing to build this relationship with God the Father. He modeled what it looks like to have that relationship. If you look back in different times in, in the New Testament, Jesus himself, in Mark 1.35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, got up, went out on his home, left his disciples, made, made his way to a deserted place where there's no one else is there, and began to pray. Why? Because again, to Jesus, his relationship with God was important. It was vital for him to continue to build his relationship with the God the Father and to spend time with him in prayer. And so he would do that early in the morning. Not, not thinking people should see me pray. He just did it on his own. And yet, also in Luke 5, 16, it says, Yet he often withdrew to deserted places and prayed. Why did Jesus pray? Because to him, building that relationship with the Father was crucial, was important to him. Seeking God the Father and spending time with him was his way of, of getting strength was his way of being filled with God's presence. In fact, we know that Jesus is the model of our faith. Amen. He ran this race of life and he ran it perfectly. And he is the one that we look to for an example. Why is that church? Because what did he do? He finished the race. Amen. He finished the race and he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Again, as we look at verses 1 through 5, as you look at Jesus' prayer to the Father, it resonates this amazing relationship that he has with the Father. When he prays this, this prayer, he's not praying like he, never, he hasn't talked to God the Father in five years. No, he, it's, it's an intimate relationship. They know each other well. So much so that it's important for us to note that when Jesus prayed, twice he said this. What did he say in verse 1? Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. There's this aspect of his prayer life was first meant to glorify God. Again, he said it again in, in the last verse, in verse 5. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I have given you before the world. Because the beginning of 
this prayer, we will learn, as we have seen, that the foundation of prayer that Jesus began is to give glory to God. And so if you ever think about prayer, prayer starts with you giving glory to God. It's not so much of you asking first. Yes, it's a direct line to speak to God. But when you're speaking and coming to Him in prayer, you're found, the foundation, and Jesus said it, is to give Him glory. Can you turn this slide? Again, His concern in His relationship with the Father was for the glory of God. It wasn't to save us first when He prayed. That wasn't his focus first when he prayed. Yes, Jesus loved us. He wanted, he was sent to die for us. But every time God prayed, you can see the order. He did not pray for us first. He prayed to the Father and asked that he would give, that he would be honored and be glorified. Have you guys ever realized what it looks like to have a prostrate prayer? You ever heard that word prostrate prayer? Because when you pray to God, and I remember my, my professor, Dr. Ganey, and this really shook me to the core, and I still remember my, my first year of seminary, he, he said, hey guys, this is what it means to prostrate prayer. Because when we pray, we seldom just come to God and say, hey God, I want this, I want that, uh, thank you God for this, but then I want this, I want that. Right? But he says, when you realize, when you come to God in prayer, you have to know who He is. And who is God? He is holy, all-powerful, just God. He's our creator. And when you look at the Old Testament, when they would have to pray, right? They would, they would have to, to the holies of holies, right? And they would have to ask the priest to, to say this prayer. They couldn't just come to it because if anyone who was, wasn't called or wasn't sanctified by God himself to, to, to pray, they would get burned alive. Because God's glory was so great, God's glory is so powerful, that if you even look at it, you would die. And so when we think about coming to God, and it's amazing that we are in the New Testament, the New, new Covenant relationship we have with God. That's why we are so privileged that not only the Holy Spirit is with us, and I'll talk more about how the Holy Spirit guides us in prayer, but when we come to Him and prostrate prayer, this is what it looks like. You don't actually, when God's praying, you don't just stand face to face to Him at the same, same level. No. Who are we compared to God? We're no one. We're nothing compared to Him. So a prostrate prayer is not even kneeling. It's not even kneeling. No, a prostrate prayer this is what it looks like. You're down and your whole face on the ground because He is holy. You can't even... You don't have the ability to even look at Him because He is God Almighty. So a prostrate prayer, when you really think about it, is your hands are down, your face is on the floor, because you realize you are not worthy. You are standing in holy ground. So when you have that perspective, you don't just come to Him saying, God, thank you, but I want this, thank you, I want that. No. You give Him honor and glory. Because when you realize who He is, as you grow deeper in your walk with God, in your prayer life, you realize He is Almighty. He is the Most High God, the Living God. He created every galaxy, galaxies that you could think of. And so, to think about it, who are we to just come to Him and just ask whatever we want? We are no one. And so, I hope this gives you a perspective that when we continue to build our relationship with God, it's crucial for us to continue to grow in our prayer life. It was crucial for Christ Himself, who is God, three in one, that they are one, and He continued to honor Him and build that relationship. Now that we've learned that prayer helps build that relationship with God, let's take a closer look to why it's important again. Because prayer is essential to following God. 6 through 19 of our text, it says, I have revealed your name, and this is Jesus praying now, I have revealed your name to the people you, have, you gave me from the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given is from you, because I have given them the words you gave me. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. He's praying for his disciples here. 
I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. Everything I have is yours, and everything you have is mine. I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them is lost, except the son of destruction, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have joy, so they may have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word. The world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I, just as I am not of the world. 15. I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them, so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. An amazing prayer of Jesus Christ for his disciples. Again, when you look at Jesus' prayer, there's this importance of, there's this intimacy he had with God the Father. And there's this intimacy that you can see that he had with his disciples. That there was this always this, this, this process of building relationship. And so I want to stress that for all of us, that as followers of Christ, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we're continuing to build our relationship with God. And prayer is so key in that part of, pro of that part of the process. And so here Jesus prayed concerning his relationship to his believers. And again, he was praying for them that they may be, continue to be obedient to the faith, that they would continue to have the, the knowledge of God. Yet he did never, he never prayed for them for, for to be transported out of their, their culture. He never prayed for them to, to, to walk away from people who are evil, who would maybe persuade them from the faith. No, he prayed that, that they would be protected from the evil one. Protection from the world. And he prayed for this unity among believers. You guys know that, that division, gossip is what divides us. It's really the, the, the seed that Satan plants in our, in our church, in our Bible study groups, in our relationship, that, that destroys the work of God. And it's really caused by our own selfishness. And, and so much so, Jesus even prayed for that, for unity, that they would be protected from the evil one. And, and he says that Jesus himself has given us the word, right, in verse 14, and that the Word of God allows us, again, to continue to know who He is, but also His Word allows us, like we have learned at, at, in our Bible study yet last night at the Western Front, right, this, this importance of continuing to, to come together, right, as we come together, and, and, and one of the lessons last night was to continue to, to seek and ask for God's help, never faltering, Never giving up. Because if God, if we who are sinful people would offer good gifts to our children, to our friends, how much more from our God who loves us, right? And then Jesus continues to say, sanctify them in the truth. Why do we need to be sanctified in the truth as we continue to follow Christ? Because again, we are sinful people. We desire to, to have the flesh be fulfilled, to be, to be pleased, to be filled with that. And Jesus says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. This morning, as we think about the importance of prayer, are you praying every day? Are you spending time in prayer? And I'm not saying that you have to pray 10 times a day, or this is the right routine. No. What I'm trying to say is, just like you pumping your gas, you going to your grocery stores, you watching your favorite show, that makes you happy throughout the week, you have a routine, amen? Don't you have a routine that, that you do every week? And those things are, are good. And th to you, maybe those things are essential, right? And I still remember, you know, my wife always say, James, make sure you 
you hug me, you say goodbye, you show affection. That's true. I, I can't forget the fact that, yes, I'm married to her for over 10 years, but I can't just say, oh, we're married, we're fine, I love her, she'll know. No, I have to continue to show her that I love her. Because to her and to, for myself as well, it's essential for our marriage. And so we do those things. And so when you think about prayer, it's so essential in following God. If you haven't truly prayed and sought God in prayer, then the truth is you have a hard time following Him every day. You have a hard time hearing His voice. The word sanctifying in Greek is hagaisio. Hagaisio. Which means, which means to set apart for God's use. We are set apart. We are not of this world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. And so when we are in this world, when your friends, your co-workers, see you, and they, and they sense this deep prayer life you have, it's not because you're just posting on Facebook, I pray, I pray, I pray. No, no, no. I mean, when they talk to you, they can just sense that you're always desiring to pray for them. That you're always valuing, valuing your prayer time with God. Again, I don't want you to say, hey guys, I'm praying, look at me. That's, no, that, Jesus hated that. Jesus even said, if you desire to pray for me, go close the door, go in your room and seek me. Don't tell anyone. But the truth is, when you have a strong prayer life, a follower of Christ can sense that. The Holy Spirit will discern that. Because a, a strong prayer life, just, just, um, it, it, it shows strong faith, but it shows strong patience, it shows strong grace, and maturity. John Calvin once put this, John Calvin, you guys know John Calvin, right? He says, as the wantonness of our flesh ever itches to dare more than God's command, let us learn that our zeal will turn out badly whenever we dare to undertake anything beyond God's word. Again, it's so easy to depart from the word of God and to not pray every day anymore. Because we can easily use our devices, listen to a preacher preach, right? We can listen to a song, we can listen to a podcast, or anything. I was like, oh, I got fed. Or read a um, daily, daily prayer is cool, but I'm not knocking, I'm just saying, for example. Daily prayer, right? And you read it, I'm done. No. It has to be more than that, church. When we start, when we begin to depart from what God has called us to do from His Word, and desire to continue to pray and seek Him, and grow in our relationship through a deep prayer life, then what happens is we're using different excuses to feed us. At the end of the day, again, that hurts our relationship with God. That hurts your faith. I remember when I first began being discipled by Pastor Bill, my prayer life was horrible. I prayed just on Sundays, or when I had to pray for food. That was the truth. And if you're doing that now, that's okay. Getting strong on that. But I realized when he walked with me and said, Hey, let's pray, James. I thought it was just five minutes at one point. We prayed for like an hour. And I was like, I ran out of things to pray about. But you know what? When you're praying with God, it's not so much of you talking so much. There's a lot of when you just listen to God's voice. And you meditate and just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. So prayer is not just you talking, no. Prayer is also you listening to God's voice. Prayer, again, is essential in following God. Lastly, why is prayer so important to the disciple of Jesus Christ? Prayer leads us to be united as one in Christ. In verse 20 to 26, it says, and now Jesus begins to pray for us today, for you and me. I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. 
May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may, may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me so that they may be made completely one. That the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I have those you have given me, given me to be with me where I am so that they will see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the world's foundation. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you. And they have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love you have loved me may be in them and I be in you. Jesus here began praying for his concern for us here today and for our relationship with the Father and each other. There's this importance of his prayer of unity, of being one in Christ and being one as we are one in Christ. Again, unity in the church is to be modeled after the unity of the triune God. Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. As, as, as John shares this last part of Jesus' prayer, the heart of this final paragraph of this chapter is unity. Why? Because when we are united as one, it demonstrates God's redemptive work. You know how hard it is to be united? Very hard. You know how hard it is and that we just married Jerome's uh, daughter, Lois, and Naji yesterday? I married them yesterday. Oh, I, I officiated their wedding. We married them. But you know what I mean. And, you know, and I shared to them, you know how difficult it is for, for a man and a woman to become one? Some of you guys who are married look at me like, yep, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. But when we, as a church, different cultural backgrounds, different walks of life, right? When we become one and united in Christ, that shows the expression of God's redemptive power and work. The gospel is revealed through our unity. Because we are selfless. We are graceful. We're forgiving people. 